Hi, my name is Daniel Blackburn and today I'm going to teach you how to quantify phosphorus in water solutions and aqueous solutions. All right, this is this is a second practical from the course SWAE4401 water and nutrient cycling in soil plant environment. So we are preparing to measure phosphorus in soil extracts, but first we have to learn how to quantify phosphorus using spectrophotometry. So how do we do it? We're gonna uh, use a method called the moly blue method, molybdenum blue phosphorus. Uh, how does it work? We have to create a chemical reaction that stains the phosphorus. It means that the solution will uh, be have more color the more phosphorus it has. If we have a high concentration of phosphorus in the solution, it will become very blue, as the name says, moly blue. If the solution has less phosphorus, it will become a faint blue. Uh, how does it work? We have to uh, create a small crystal surrounding the phosphate ion. Uh, and this crystal is surrounding the phosphate with uh, a molybdenum. So this, this small crystal is called a Keegan structure, and this Keegan structure allows it to be stained. So you can stain this in different ways to visualize it either in blue or in yellow or in green. Um, but in this case now we're going to use the moly blue method. You know, the blue color is developed when you use a reducing agent uh, in this system and then the, the, the whole crystal will become blue. And how does it look like? It looks like this. Yeah, if you see the tubes on the bottom, the first tube with no color is only water plus the color development solution. And if you increase the concentration of phosphorus in these waters, uh, in these uh, solutions, you will get that the, the color developed will, be, will become more and more uh, a stronger blue color. Yeah? And we can measure this, uh, the amount of blue color using a spectrophotometer. And uh, with the spectrophotometer, we can either do a single wavelength measurement or we can do the full spectrum, yeah? We can do a spectrum of absorbance. And this first graphic here, you have a spectrum. And each line corresponds for one concentration of phosphorus, 0 0.2 ppms, 0 0.4 ppms of phosphorus, 0 0.6 ppms of, phosph of phosphorus. And the, in the, the, the x-axis is the wavelength, so the, the, the wavelength of the light being shot through the sample. Um, you can see the profile here that uh, the, the, the maximum absorption of light is at a wavelength of 880, so therefore is uh, the wavelength that we choose to measure phosphorus. Now, if we cross on the, the next graphic here that we have on the right, if we plot uh, absorbance and concentration of phosphorus in the solution, we will see that there is a straight line. It means that with increasing color, you will have uh, increasing concentration. And the other way around, if you increase the concentration of phosphorus, you will have more and more color on the sample. And we can use the equation of this uh, fit to, um, to uh, uh, quantify whatever is the amount of phosphorus in our samples. Now, it's important to say that this method is a continuous development, color development. It means if you wait more, you will have more color. And if you read it quick, it will have less color. So you need to use the curve which is measured at the same time of your samples. You add the color development solution to your samples and then uh, end to the curve at the same time and you measure both of them at the same time so one will be reflecting the other. If you do it once, the, uh, what you do today is not valid to be using what the, for your measurements tomorrow. 
So it's important in this method that you always have a calibration curve when you're measuring your samples. So we are going to show you how does it work, how is the protocol, and uh, let me show you the equipment first. This is the equipment here on, on this image. We have on the right the, the, the plate reader. On the left, we have the computer that controls the plate reader. And here is the microplate. The microplate is just a plastic tool, transparent plastic, uh, that is, uh, has very little absorbance uh, of light. The light can go through. And then we can place 300 microliters maximum in each well here. And it has uh, 96 wells in total in this microplate. So the, the, there is eight rows and 12 columns. Yeah? And then if you multiply, you get uh, 96 wells microplate. So I'm going to show you a little bit about the protocol that we use to quantify phosphorus step by step with the videos that we filmed on, on the lab with Lilwa doing and performing the protocol for you guys, okay? So first step is to prepare the four solutions that we're gonna use for the color development. The first one is sulfuric acid. The second one is ammonium molybdate. The third one is potassium antimonium tartrate. And uh, the fourth one is ascorbic acid, ascorbic acid. So once you prepare these four solutions, you have to prepare now a mixed reagent. The mixed reagent will contain 10 ml of solution A, 3 ml of solution B, 1 ml of solution C, and 6 ml of solution D. The ascorbic acid that you use, the, the solution D, has to be prepared on the day. The other solutions you can prepare before. You can prepare and uh, in, in keep it on the fridge or uh, protect it from light. It will be still be possible to use it even though you um, uh, have it, you, you, it will last for months. Yeah? But the, the ascorbic acid will spoil. So it's important that you always dissolve the, uh, the, uh, the solution D in the day that you are measuring. So here is little one just pipetting and um, uh, each solution in making this mixed reagent. Yeah, mixing this mixed reagent. Uh, this is continu continuation of Lilua making the mixed reagent also. And um, let's just fast forward a little bit because this um, you already know what is the, the constitution. So actually, she's just mixing this amount. 10 ml of, of A, 3 ml of B, 1 ml of, C, 1 ml of C, and 6 ml of D. It has to be in this order, by the way. Uh, the acid must come first, then the ammonium molybdate, um, and then the antimonium tartrate, and then the ascorbic acid, in this order. Otherwise, it would not work properly. Um, all right, let's go forward here in this uh, solution preparation. So next thing is that we are going to prepare our microplate. In the microplate, we are going to, this is the microplate here on the bench and the laminar flow hood, and we are going to pipette our standards. Yeah? The standards will contain uh, from 0 up to 1 ppm. Yeah? From 0 up to 1 ppm, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0 0.8. And they, we pipetted them on the first two columns of the plate. You can see here it's marked 0 to 1 ppm on the side, and it's marked curved. And we, are, we also have uh, pl plenty of spaces to pipette our samples. You can place your samples wherever you like on this plate. And uh, you will read the full plate anyway. You just need to know exactly where they are uh, so you can... Um, uh, find them later on, okay? After you pipette your samples and curve, then you have to add uh, 40 microliters of the color development reagent to each one of the wells. This procedure, the quicker you do it, the better, but if you do it even bet between uh, uh, the first five minutes, it's, it's okay, it will not give you too much error. Um, but the quicker the better. We have also on the lab a multi-channel pipette where you can pipette the full uh, column at once 
so we will not have uh, any problems uh, on delaying this um, and having differences on the measurement. Now she is placing the microplate on the plate reader and if you look back just a little bit you will see the color difference on the plate already developed yeah so every standard will have a different color um, and she's placing placing it on the plate reader and we're going to configure the the, the the measurement and uh, ask the equipment to read it for us so to configure on the software on the computer we uh, ask them to um, read the full plate, mark everything as unknown, the, the, the layout of the plate. Now we have to set up the method as photometric, precision, and we are going to set up the wavelength, 880 nanometers here. Um, then press play. When you press play, the machine will do the reading. So you will see the plate will go in and the readings will start and as the equipment uh, starts reading the data instantaneously appears on your screen uh, when the plate is finished reading we will have to open this data in Excel and work out the calculations I prefer to do the calculations in Excel rather than in the software from the equipment I think it's easier and more simple to do it this way yeah more, more simple to do it this way then in uh, then in the software there's the option of doing so this is opening the data in Excel you will see here and then you can just copy this to a new spreadsheet and this has the same layout as your plate has eight rows and twelve columns so you have the first two or the curve and you have your samples where you place them you can copy in the new spreadsheet and you can then work the analysis. So I will shift from the video and I will go for Excel and I will show you how to treat your standard curve and quantify the phosphorus on your samples. Yeah, I will shift from this video for the Excel mode and let's do it, okay? Uh, okay, Excel mode, let's go. I'll just place the computer like this so it will be easier. So we have here, this is this is the data that we have, okay, the two first columns are absorbance, the, the last one is just one random sample that I'm selecting. So what is this absorption about? This is the, the, the first two columns are the standards. So the first standard is zero ppm phosphorus, so you get P in PPMs, the unit is PPMs. The first is 0 PPMs, the next one is 0 0.1, the next one is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1 PPM. And this is our sample, it's not a standard, yeah? Sample. Now what we want to do is we want to use the, the concentration of the standards that we know and now we want to measure what is the concentration in our samples. We need to compare this data with the data that we get for our standards. And how do we do it? Then we first have to calculate the delta absorbance. Absorbance. And how do we... I will show you the formula now to calculate the delta absorbance. This is average of the first... Uh, the zero, the blanks, minus the blanks itself. This will become zero, okay? Average, average of them. Now you fix, you fix the subtraction that you're always going to subtract the blanks. So the dollar sign here will mean that when you drag this formula around the spreadsheet, it will always be subtracting the zero, yeah? Always be subtracting the zero. Because the zero we still have a small amount of absorption, but you have to subtract it anyway from all your samples. So let's go like this. And you if you drag it, you will see that this already subtracting always the zero, subtracting the blank. Yeah? Every concentration is subtracting the blank. And we're gonna make a plot, a scatter plot between the concentration in PPM and the um, 
delta absorption ab absorbance yeah delta absorbance you go insert uh, scatter plot here scatter okay and this is our standard curve from the data we got okay so next step is let's just label uh, things properly first uh, uh, this is axis titles and the y-axis is delta absorbance and the x-axis is p concentration p concentration in ppms yeah? p and ppms or milligrams per liter yeah? milligrams per liter it's the same thing of SPPMs. Now, how do we use this to calculate the concentration on our samples? We need to add a, um, a trend line. You need to fit a line to this curve and know the equation of that line. So we're gonna choose linear, and we are gonna ask all these things on the bottom here, set intercept in zero, uh, display the equation on the chart, and display the R squared value. The R squared will tell you how good your fit is with your function. Yeah, how good it is. If the closer it is to one, it means you're more precise. If you're you're becoming below 0 0.95, it becomes it's, it's becoming uh, a little bit strange your measurement. Not you cannot trust it too much. Okay. Once you do that, okay, you can just uh, close it here. And here is your function. Yeah, the function you have. This function is y-axis delta absorption, absorption equals 0 0.3597 times the concentration. So if you want to measure the concentration, you need to divide your absorption by this number. So let's do it. Yeah. First, we create your delta absorption absor absorbance for your sample. Copy, paste. And this will be the same formula, subtracting the zero. You have to subtract the blank. You know, subtract the blank from the average of your sample. And this is the delta absorbance for your sample. Now, how do you calculate the concentration? P in milligrams per liter will be, you have to divide this delta absorbance by that number that is on the the chart here yeah the number is 0 0.3 0 0.397 okay and it will give you this is the concentration that you have in ppms yeah you have 0 0.37 ppms or approximately 0 0.4 ppms <clears throat> also if you have any dilution if you need to dilute your dilute your sample you can multiply this value by the dilutions that you make. So if you dilute it 10 times, you have to multiply this value by 10 times in order to get a uh, the, the accurate measurement of what you're doing. Okay, so this is uh, the, what, you, what you have. And um, for, for your lab, you will receive uh, a, a data set like this. And you will have to calculate the, the phosphors in different samples. The, your samples will have replicates. And we want you to calculate uh, if sample 1 is uh, the same uh, as sample 2. Also, average standard deviation and do uh, ANOVA on the data to compare if your phosphorus concentration between your two samples are the same or not. Okay, so you will receive a data set, you will receive a lab handout, and you will, uh, you will have to write a report about how to quantify phosphorus in aqueous solutions and, and how your data behaved from sample 1 and sample 2. In the next lab, we're going to talk about how to make soil extracts and measure them in the same way. So we're going to show you two extracts water extracts, which are very simple, and the bicarbonate extracts, which are the ocean extracts, sodium bicarbonate uh, at um, pH 8.5, uh, th that will be the ocean extract, 0 0.5 molar pH 8.5. So this will be the next lecture, the next lab.
for now we're just showing you, you how to calculate the phosphorus concentration. You will need this on the next lab, so make sure you learn it very well. Okay, thank you very much. This is what we have for today, and I hope you enjoyed and learned something.